streaming. So, what is even playing there in the background? That sounds like VTubers. Can I skip? Maybe. Warte mal. Ah ja, it's eh vorbei. Okay, yeah. vergiss es. <laughs> Still worth it. Okay. We are back. Hi, back. So, yeah, we are back. Um, greetings from uh, Internet yeah. Newland, Germany, where Internet isn't always as stable as it should be for an industrialized mm -hmm. nation as ours. I don't know. Uh, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> so my internet was just gone for I don't know half an hour, twenty minutes. I mean, it was there for like a minute again. Yeah, like it very shortly. Again. Then it was gone again. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but here I am. I actually just kept working, tweaked some details, and uh, damage numbers are actually here now. I actually did a little change. Oh, actually, this is... Ah, that's something I should... Uh, like this. Oh, zeros. Uh, wait. Ah, hmm. Now that makes sense. Okay. Look, there's actually still a bug here. Um... Already. Anyway, um... So yeah, damage numbers are working and um, something I did is that they actually now move kind of like in the direction the victim is moving when you attack it. So that's kind of like how you get this kind of thing here. And I think I kind of like this because it, in crosscode, damn, those HP bars are really broken and also like the menu bar is not... Something is really messed up with the GUI system. I don't know what it is, but suddenly uh -oh. stuff is just disappearing. Like um, before, I had this too, where like the option button is just gone. That's not good. No, that's not good at all. It's not really easy reproducible too. And that that kind of sucks. Here now, look. A button is gone. It's just gone. Oh boy. <sighs> yeah. Is there some caching happening? Let's have a look. Actually, that's something I'll need to work on anyway next. Um. Yeah. The GUI is pooled. That's actually a very good candidate of things being broken. When is a GUI hook released? So uh, first of all, when it's created. What about remove after transition? It's actually set to false. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, bye, Yui. Bye, bye. Oh, bye. Sleep well, Uwu. Okay, Kuvash asked, sorry to asking off topic, but the network again, did you try performance, how many actors you can have on scene? Remember you have issues in CC adding that running around NPCs. No, we didn't do any big tests on that yet. Um, I think like uh, characters tend to be more expensive, but only when they're on the screen. But actually that's an optimization I still need to do, but right, like you only need to do like the complicated animation calculations when they're on the screen. And uh, if you have a lot of actors running around on the map, it's mostly navigation and collision. That is kind of like uh, what's drawing the performance and 
things might be somewhat faster, but I don't think like um, I don't th think it's like hugely more efficient either. So we still have to be careful about this. So one is a. Uh, hmm. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just happening in the constructor. <laughs> Damn, this is uh, annoying. Hmm? No, it's okay. Uh, there's actually something interesting that I re recently read, and I'm not sure if it's if it's actually official or if it was just a clip post. Uh, I heard that apparently Luigi is very popular with female players. Are very or very attractive to female players. Okay. I'm like, I think that's something that we need to keep in mind. Okay, so still here. Okay, now I just restarted and all the buttons are gone. Damn. Okay, actually there was like a debug panel for that, right? Uh, for GUI elements, I just I, do, I want to find out what's happening here because something is really weird here. So there's a loading screen, then there's the pause screen, and the pause screen has combatant hut. What the heck? Oh boy, what is... <laughs> okay, so when is a hook actually released? I think it has to be related to this because we are pulling the hooks and they need to be released and when it does that on detach so when is on detach called And this is uh, like a really weird bug. Okay, so let me just restart the game again. Nothing like some really critical de game debugging. <laughs> You know, yeah, on the game yeah. stream, we had those. This is also like sometimes when I start the game, I just always land on the devil man. That's also something we need to fix at some point. This is annoying. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Right. Mm. In Felix, you know what we also need to fix? What? Mm. Our Twitch, Twitch page saying we have regular game uh, dev streams every week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, so this this is now the button, the button, the button guy. Which one? GUI. Button, button GUI. So, um, okay, I will actually not do a debugging thing. I'll just sample wherever a hook is released. Because I was, I want to see where this happens. Uh, okay, S freaking damage numbers. But it seems like the damage numbers are actually not part of this A bug because I've seen this before. Before I added damage numbers, so I'll just remove the damage numbers for now, the hit numbers, because I want to, s I want to find this bug.
Okay, let's see. It's all correct so far. I'm getting almost a heart attack whenever the, the screen lags a bit because I think, oh shit, Felix got <laughs> No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's because I'm debugging. Whenever a okay. GUI is deleted, I'm currently. Uh, it's not really a lag or anything, it's just it makes that sense I'm. Because, and also, I can see. Uh, I can still see you moving on the web. On yeah, the it's okay. Okay, this is so weird. Oh, more GUIs are released. Which one are released? Wait, remove child. Oh, 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 shit. We have to cancel the project? Because yes, everything needs to be canceled. It's broken. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's, um, <sighs> what is happening here? Stefan is removing buttons in the pause menu and then he adds them again. But when you remove a button, it, it kind of like assumes like it's already detached and then the GUI is essentially deleted the GUI hook oh. Damn, how did we do this in crosscode? <coughs> Alright, I just realized that the Chucklefish also developed Starbound and Wargroove. I totally forgot about that. But it was also just a publishing thing. Oh well. Play Tale of the Bugger. Yeah. Uh, I have something. Oh, right. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. Stefan made go hooks pullable, but they're actually not. <sighs> the way we use GUI hooks doesn't make them very pullable. Because essentially, we kind of clean them up when you detach a GUI element but you should only clear them when you actually destroy a GUI element so that's the problem <sighs> that makes a lot of things harder so it, it clears them up too early or what? no he, since he's adding and removing children uh, from the pause menu and that's what we do in crosscode pretty often and when you actually remove a GUI element he detaches the GUI and when the detacher GUI you also release the GUI hook to the pool for other, for other GUI elements to take and reuse 
yeah. But those elements are not really gone. They are still in the system. So what happens is that some of my HP bars actually take the GUI hook from the buttons. And then essentially when they are removed, the GUI button is also removed. So and that's that's Sorry. how the how the trouble happens. And that's how all kind of confusing things are going on. Yeah, we have to kind of like that's not an easy fix though. We have to kind of like uh, find a good compromise for that because we we often do this just creating and deleting GUI elements and I think we need to be more explicit when they are actually deleted and when they are just temporarily disconnected. It's not exactly the same thing anymore. Uh. Makes sense. I mean, for sure. I mean, sounds like something you should maybe talk to Stefan about. Yeah, I need I need to plan both, this with them. Yeah. Since you both worked on this this aspect. Yeah. I hope this also this also. I hope this also Sorry. solves this uh, issue of um, some GUI elements uh, just um... Sorry, what was I? Uh, this some of the GUI elements just uh, of the HP bars just disappearing. I'm not sure if that also solves uh. this issue, but well, it's possible. Um, so Let's say I made uh, mm. hard, medium, and weak hit sounds. Is yeah. there any way I can implement them in the game already? Uh, I could just quickly make uh, three different effects uh, and push that. Um, I actually already made... I mean, I copied the same effect and just used different sounds. Okay, so where do you play the effect? Uh, let me see. Um, I, I know it's, it's in combat. I Should just... I push my effects first? Yeah, I'll just push them. Okay, give me a second. I'll just add like um, impact, attack impact. You make sure to add the, all the new files. Mm. Oh wow wow, is that a raid? I am hearing a raid. That is uh Who's actually raiding us? I didn't pay attention. Oh okay, it is uh Jinja raiding Ginger! us with, with over four hundred people. Um hello Hello oh, to everyone that's so sweet of you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, that's a lot of attention for us essentially just being here stuck with a weird bug and uh, not knowing what to do. Yes, yeah. uh, at least we have that song now. We okay. have that song now. That's very fitting. Uh, but also it's, it's, it's a nice shot to the arm to the stream that we had to interrupt for like Okay. <laughs> Did you um, push your change, Flora? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly stash rebase. Stash pop. Okay. So let me see. How did you call? How yes. Did, how, <laughs> how did you call the effects? So I called them sword weak, sword medium, and sword hard. In combat hit. Mhm. Mm okay. Sword light. Uh, actually weak. But ah, weak. weak. Okay. Light would make sense more. Yeah, I mean that's the convention we had. Um, let me just rename it. Like the convention was light, medium, heavy. Um, uh. Because weak is not like that's, that's like depending on the defense, not the offense. Okay, it seems like I have a bug now. Uh, so should pay attention wait you are coding a game yes we are um maybe i can quickly show off the game since we have so many yeah. viewers um okay 
<laughs> so let's see. Here we have a game. That's the game we're working on. The project name is Terra. It's like a pixel art, but also kind of 3D. You can like run around, jump and stuff. Uh, it's a little bit like Frostcode. Actually, kind of a lot like Frostcode. But we tweaked certain details. It's not so easy to fall down anymore. Um, you actually now explicitly jump using the dash button. That's new. There's also attacks already. You can also aim. Still kind of like cross code, but like slightly 3D. And you're actually supposed to be able to shoot up and down now. Like I could shoot that stone down here, but it's not working yet. That's something we still need to do. And we also got some some enemies. Let, let me just apologize about this enemy design. This is just a placeholder, but that's that's all we got right now. Oh wow, those are new hit sounds. That's something I just implemented. Pew pew pew. Yeah, I, I haven't tested them yet. I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> They're kind of pewy, very pewy, but... Uh, they could well, very well be. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Sounds still very much in progress, but um Yeah. It is a nice direction considering it's more of an energy sword, right? Yeah, it's a little bit sharp I think, but yeah, yeah well, I don't know. Let me let me actually those are actually not light hits though. I mean those are actually medium hits. So let me actually implement this now properly. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm kind of grinning right now because yeah. uh, because of Ginger. <laughs> Ginger is very nice. Uh, she's a great, great streamer. She's a VTuber too. What? Okay. German, what? German one. Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't know those kind of people. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and uh, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Uh, there actually is a. TSO TypeScript game engine. How is it called? It's actually our own engine. Um, yes, it's our. We kind of like. We are also. We were crazy about Crossco in that we wrote our own JavaScript engine, and this time at least we are using TypeScript, so port things won't be as much of a hellish nightmare for our poor porting guy if he does the project again. But yeah, I mean, no. TypeScript kind of helps in that regard. But we actually like working with sweat technology, so... Hmm. And, and yes, uh, Ginger played CrossCode on, on her stream as well. She played through the whole game. I think... I think... Uh, she hasn't played the DLC yet. I think oh. it was before the DLC came out. That she finished it, but it took her... Uh, like she streamed it uh, re on a regular basis for I think several months. So. Damn. I mean. I mean, I uh, just not? just weekly, I think. It, you didn't. I mean, I can recommend it, but take your time. <laughs> hmm. It's okay. It's okay. It's an okay DLC for an okay game. That was. Oops. So, you yeah. actually get a smooth uh, few impression from our indie editors here. Um, so, I wanted to check the effects, the names. Um, combat, hit. Ah, oh, with minus, okay. That's why it didn't work. Um, have you pushed it? Huh? I can test. No, uh, I, I didn't push anything yet. I'm still okay. making it work. Okay, okay. Pew, pew. <laughs> yeah, okay, so... It, me it was a meme at the time that Ginger will never finish cross <laughs> <laughs> Well, Oh well. I mean, <laughs> It's, it's, it's a, a game, game that uh, that travels with you for time. 
Yep. Especially when you play it on stream. Like, I mean, how many... How many... Uh, streams you would need to finish it. Mm. Mm. Even if you do really long streams, like... It's like... It's long. I think uh, Ginger also had a really nice play style I liked because um, she used the quick menu a lot to pause mm. during gameplay and right. she used it uh, while solving puzzles and during fights to switch elements and take her time with the fights and uh, that's, that's an aspect we actually want to encourage in, in Project Terra. Yeah, I want to add more options to easily kind of like pause the game in, in Project Terra so you can get a better overview because Crosscode was a bit hectic even for my taste and I think like we had the quick menu but it was a bit like, um, I mean you could like kind of like turn on this uh, just press once and not hold but I think for Terra we will make this a default, I think. And uh, there's stuff like I think you should be able to easily move the camera when you're paused because it actually helps a lot to kind of like get a better overview and these kind of things and crossbow this never was something we added and also stuff like i'm i still want to have some kind of pause or slowdown when you switch elements because in crossbow that was up to the very end i always had like a hard time switching elements and it was always um kind of like i, I, I very often misclicked and all that mm. So, okay, here we go. If that okay, happens heavy. to the depths. <laughs> yeah. Heavy doesn't work. Even uh -oh. the don't have. Uh, let me see. I think I know why. I just should do an else. Because uh, there's not just heavy, there's also massive. And Did I actually use massive or... The heavy attack that would be too much though uh, wait a second uh, so let's see you're saying that you're bad game devs we're actually bad ass game devs okay hey, <laughs> still doesn't did work just, what did you just call my my ass bad i take this yes. personally damn it Oh, maybe I just wrote the... Oh, sword heavy doesn't exist. Uh, did I misspelled something? Maybe I misspelled. Let me check. Uh, need to open the editor. Should just leave it open. Okay. Ah, sword hard. That's why. Hard, hard online? Uh, instead of heavy. I wrote ah. hard instead of heavy, so okay. that's why nothing worked. Mm. Okay, let's start again. <laughs> we yeah. will try our best oh. to make her play the DC as well. Well, I mean. <laughs> Seems a bit shorter with the rest of the game. <laughs> Yeah, it's just one dungeon, it's but it's also the longest dungeon. <laughs> but it's it's a well balanced dungeon. Did you change the effect too? Uh, slightly, yes. I played around a little bit. Oh, I see. I thought I thought it's uh, temporary. Yeah, it is. So I can I can mess around a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit. It could be more random. Yeah, I, I just wanted to see um, mm. if <laughs> because the, you you almost always slice horizontal if you can make it seem like look, look like a horizontal uh. slice or something. Mm, I, I'm not sure. I think at some point it's it's really hard to really see those effects. And I don't know. Let me see again. Like just artistically, it just doesn't look as interesting though. 
Because the problem is those effects mm. just happen over and over and over again. Yeah, you want to have I some see. randomness in it. And like, I don't know. Mm. It was like, just me clicking around for a minute. So mm. there wasn't much thought behind it. I'm just going to delete it all. We have hit, I mean. Important question, Felix. Are, yeah. you, getting win are you getting Windows 11? This Windows 11? They plan to yep. release it at some point. Okay. Oh, you like that sort of swinging sound. That's... I'm glad. I worked quite a while on that as well. Yeah, I like this, the swing sound a lot as well. Okay. So... Okay. Let's just take like the default and make it a bit here. Let's take, uh, which is the longer one? This is the longer one. Let's move this. Okay. Instead here, let's make three. A bit less distance. That's good. Okay, now we have... How do you reload the map? Was that four? Yeah, oh, right. it it. Huh? I mean, you. It does. You have to explicitly go to the debug panel, select the map that you want to re have reloaded, double click yeah. start the session. Then, once you do that, you can always press F4 and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's recorrectly reloading. So the problem is that the session is kind of like always gets reset back to the last to so some kind of generic map. And that's something we, that needs to be fixed. Why are they headbanging? Why? Why not? Because they like to do that. Okay. Um. I get the impression they still feel a bit too wishy, like wooshy for me, or how you say, I don't know. Could very well be, I have no idea how they sound in-game. That's why I wanted to have them in-game, so I can, I can test them. Okay, I will just push now. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, do I still have damage numbers, actually? I did I remove those damage numbers? Let me add them again so you can see those damage numbers too. Ninja also has very nice emotes. I like her emotes a lot. Both are super mm. cute. I was, I was uh, noticing them. All oh, right, they are animated emotes as well. I forgot that uh, right. that's a Twitch of official thing now. <laughs> hmm. Finally, after like how many years? Let me see if the light hits work too. I mean, all I need to it's do just... is change the projector. It's just so perfect that they are um, all he all headbanging in like a line at the start. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's Look at them! Look at these emotes. Those are great. <laughs> so. It's like Felix. When, uh, whenever you do a stream drawing again, it should be a stream drawing. <laughs> Like you know, rocking out in the foreground, it's those head banging people in the background who are naked. In front. Uh, will there be one attack chain only, or is Protectora gonna have more variations in attack chain? Oh, very good to ask. We are actually planning things. Mm -hmm. Make a bit to be a bit more uh, variable, and also, yeah, also me can already show something. Look at this. 
actually see it. You already have some do you take chains. Yeah, There's know. also like a hold mm -hmm. attack, but those are just temporary, so. Yeah, yeah. But the system is already here. In fact, like, uh, Stefan wrote like a whole weapon combo tree thing. So <laughs> there will definitely be more combos this time. We also we, we also plan to make the skill tree a bit more relevant for your combat style, like that you unlock more uh, chains and special attributes to do those attack chains and stuff like that. Not like how in crossbow everything was like stats, stats and bonus. So we want to make uh, that a bit more um, involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's a delay attack, there's a dash attack. Yeah, like here, this is a... When you hold. It's pretty subtle, but if you do a normal attack, it looks like this, but if you dash, you actually make this attack. I have a lot of fun chaining dash attacks. Yeah, it looks, looks really cool. We also, we also planned, uh, uh, this week we also planned a bit on the, on how what basically the equipment will work in, mm -hmm. in Terra. I mean, we we, are, we haven't set anything in stone, but we made a bit of progress. It's like, it will also be a bit different than in cross code. In both, uh, in, in both streamlining stuff, but also making choices still uh, matter a lot, maybe even more than in cross code. So. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we, how that will work. Yep. <laughs> we planned um, quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. I, I didn't pay attention. Have you pushed? Uh, yes. You did or? No, did I did. Not? No, I will do now. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I guess I will look forward to it in what 2024. Yeah, good question. Uh, I mean, that's a good, that's a hopeful date. Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely plan to have less of a less development time than, than crosscode uh, but that's maybe a low bar to jump uh, maybe does less. the game have an i mean it, yeah um the crosscode was in early access for like three yeah. years right three years and it's probably three and a half and we plan the same time for project Terra. Yeah. Kinder a bit, or yeah. Or Though less, we did, yeah, we do start a bit with a bit less, though. So that means we have to be a bit faster uh, compared to Crosscode. But I mean, the thing is, we also don't exactly have like the scope will, won't still won't be small by any means, but maybe not quite as Crosscode. And uh, we do, we will try to spread the workload better this time. So I hope this will yep. make a big we have difference. Better tools. We have more experience. Points. We are better skilled this time. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, but um, I mean, Crosscode also had like a lot of development before early access, of course. But then again, it was very limited development in, many, in that not that many people worked on it at that point, at mm. least not full time mm. or even part time. And yeah, so it's 20, true as well. Most of the team was part time or just freelancing for most yeah. of the early access. That's true. Now we actually have full time people, like more full time people working on the project. Like most people are working full time now, or at least part time consistently. Um, so that, that probably will make a difference. Yeah, and 20. Yeah, again, 2024 is a, is a nice, a nice date to plan for. But I mean, no promises, of course. Um, does the game have an inventory? Not yet, but it's pla It's planned. I mean, actually, the groundwork for items is already in, right? So. Um, does the game has an inventory? Yeah, there will definitely be an inventory. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think um, we have now quarter past 11. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I added some kind of damage numbers, so let's let's have a look at them once again. I mean, they're quite simple yet. Um, something... I mean, like, let's 
compare them shorty with crosscode so this is how they look now they kind of like move a bit away like uh, in sync with how the enemy moves away from the attack so they kind of like move into the hit velocity um let me actually open up crosscode and see how that looked in comparison uh map just discover this channel can you describe this project in like one sentence you have only one sentence oh, cross globe by 3d huh no but the thing is one sentence is not really that big of a of a problem because we are german and we germans are very infamous for making very long sentences with part partial sentences and many commas that actually was one sentence yes ex for example <laughs> so basically you see we we did cross code which was a great game comma and it was very fun and but now okay. we're making terra which is which is also a great game but it will be even more fun and that's why and that's why and that is and it has this feature and this feature and this feature and also it's 3d and yeah. even more and i can even more make more sentences with more commas and more ends and you can't stop me okay maybe that's cheating nice yeah i mean no it's not it's it's correct it's okay. very in the very literal sense. Let me just take a higher level. Yeah, but yeah, Terra is like an action RPG with some definitely focus on exploration and action combat and also puzzle solving to some extent. Um, it will be pretty uh, similar to Crosscode in terms of gameplay story and uh, setting will be different though so again here this is how cross code damage numbers work and <clears throat> what always kind of like i thought was a bit annoying is that kind of like as you hit things the damage numbers kind of like stick at the point where the hit happened but everything's are moving forward that means usually they kind of like overlap with where you're going and they're kind of like overlapping over the player and enemy and with Project Terra, they're kind of like moving in hit direction and that means they're not overlapping as much with the action. So kind of like they tend to disappear by the time you move uh, over them. That's at least the idea. I want to see it in slow-mo in Terra. Oh, that's a nice detail. It looks like you're punching the numbers out of them. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the idea. <laughs> that's true. In that's fact, true. it, it was that's a little crazy. bit inspired by uh, the Search 2, actually. They had um, this kind of thing where the damage numbers kind of like flew away from the hit position in the direction of the hit, and I thought it was like a nice idea. So it's a little bit copied from them. But I guess what? many games do these kind of things. Uh, good question. Well, I do have a question then. What exactly are the damage numbers for? Well, they're they for you to feel good. Right. In many <laughs> ways, they are. <laughs> and they, they also um, give you some information about, like, not just the damage, but also how effective it is. Yeah, yeah. Right now so, like, like uh, let me show the graphics again. There's actually different colors. White means the damage is normal, gray means it's not very effective. Uh, orange means you're actually about um, to break the enemy, so this attack helps to break the enemy. And that's kind of like similar to yellow, which just means you're doing effective damage. And I mean, those can be kind of like uh, mistaken for each other, but that's not a big problem because they actually mean similar things. Um, that's why I thought it's not a big deal if they're similar, but we can still swap swap the colors if necessary but yeah I, th I wanted to have special colors if you're doing attacks that are actually helping to break the enemy so that's why they're orange I actually also while the stream was offline I actually was tweaking the dash a little bit 
and made it a bit more faster and quicker reacting without necessarily increasing the distance so kind of like before you had to kind of like a very linear motion and I made it that in the beginning it's faster and then it gets a bit slower towards the end and I think that kind of feels better so it more feels like you're dashing and quickly dodging something Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Uh, actually, something I didn't show. Maybe I can show this still. Um, and then end the stream because I think we stream for quite long already. I mean, yeah. It's Why is the sound coming from the left for me? For me, it's. But can you crouch? Mm, actually, no, you can't. Was that the medium sound you're hearing there? I think it is. Damage numbers sometimes, damage bars are sometimes missing and they're not. Actually, okay, I wanted to show something. Um, so, they actually like a new option we have in Terra and that we can actually modify the enemy frequency. Um, that is kind of like how how the en how often the enemy attacks. Like, uh, let me restart again. So when I attack all those enemies, just pay attention to how, how often they attack. So. They do attack sometimes, but they actually don't attack as often as they need what need to attack if there would actually be six times the enemies. But if I move the frequency cross to the value of one, then this will f be like this here. So as you see now they're actually attacking like all the time. You can just barely get a break to attack. So this is actually like the realistic behavior. If each enemy would have a timer and this timer will just stay the same no matter how many enemies are in there, that's what you would get. Like enemies just attacking constantly. So that's why we have this kind of system where we kind of like regulate the frequency in a way that it doesn't increase linear with the number of enemies because that usually doesn't play very well unless you design your game like Dark Souls where it's intentionally about not fighting too many enemies at once but that's not the kind of game we are doing um, so yeah that's why we now have this option the big difference is in crosscode we had one algorithm for all enemies and in project terra we can actually configure this depending on the enemy type and that's well i think this could be very useful especially for um mass enemies enemies where you attack fight a lot of enemies at once you actually want to be able to turn this value down closer to zero because otherwise it will very easily feel unbalanced uh, we had this issue with some of some mass enemies in crosscode like the slimes or the mosquitoes they were actually just way too difficult if there were too many of them that's why for those enemies you would turn down this frequency increase and all that mosquitoes uh sorry the um Colibri enemies, the final dungeon. Mm. Mm -hmm. I always call them mosquitoes because to me they kind of look like mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. I know. But can you crouch? No. Write this game off my wish list. Whoops. Well, can you can you climb ladders, Felix? Can you climb ladders? Maybe. I actually was thinking of actually implementing it this time. Uh, have you, I 
wonder, have you actually talked to Stefan about this? Because uh, while mm. we were waiting for you um, for, uh, before the meeting, because you were so many minutes late, Felix, yeah. like one minute or something, yeah. uh, Stefan and I, we talked about um, like if swimming actually makes sense, because Stefan did a few test maps, obviously, and he feels like he should maybe not have swimming after all, because um, for swimming to really make sense, you would need way bigger map sizes. I don't water. agree. I don't know. You would need to explain yeah. this to me why that is. I, th I think the idea. I think the idea was that swimming only really makes sense. It feels good when the um, amount of water you can have is big enough. And also, if you can, if you can swim, you need to design your maps in a. Um, I think the first I don't agree because a uh, link to the past had swimming and that was perfectly fine. And those had had really small maps. And the was slower in that one. So I think huh? that's, that's different. I think the movement was slower. In yeah, that but one. the maps so are also much smaller compared to what we have in Terra. Yeah, but so. also the movement is slower. You can't you can't move as quickly and as freely as in, as in Terra. I think that does make a difference. I mean, I, I don't I, know. I, I, I can't. I'm not really fully agreeing with Stefan yet. I'm mm. more neutral on it because I haven't. I have made the mapping experience that he made this, uh, uh, at this point. But I can see what he means, and also um, I totally agree that mapping is a bit more difficult when you can swim because you can't use uh, water as as a natural barrier anymore. So you would need to put water there and then put like. Uh, weird rocks in the water to <laughs> to uh, prevent people from getting f further and stuff like that. I mean, you can have water and just a slightly higher edge where you can't climb up again. Yeah, of course, I mean, yeah. that, that works. I mean, that's the easiest solution pretty much. Just make the edge we of also, the water a bit higher. I mean, it's not that also difficult. Have flow in the water so you're like pushed in a direction. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just make a. Yeah, just make the edge slightly higher. Just re lower the water a little bit, and there you go. You cannot go up again. It's, I don't. Really? I don't really understand why this is not difficult. So. so there's a big problem with that. Yes. Too much water. Now, uh, I can imagine, like you, you fall down from a jumping puzzle mm. into a, a fast river, and you get pushed back to the start of the puzzle again, basically. Hmm. Sure, yeah, that's kind of... It feels a bit more organic than just respawning, in my that's opinion. True. That's true. But the problem is too much water, 4 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, okay. Or whatever. Yeah, but, but also uh, ice water, 10 out of 10. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, are you going to release this game as Early Access 2 in 2023? Or something. I mean, mm. do we plan early access? I mean, we did put so have some made some nice uh, experience with that, but um, we don't want to have long early access again. Hmm. I mean, I would like to have Leah. Yeah, yeah, Leah is great. I mean, we can always have like fluids where you cannot swim. I mean, maybe a compromise would say you can actually swim, but you would respawn rather quickly. So you cannot swim like indefinitely. Oh, so you can dark. actually usually cannot get very far, but there's like slight things where you can swim over or everything. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or damaging water. Right. Hmm? It's damaging water. Could also be a possibility. I mean, of course. I mean, that's or not difficult. Water, yeah. Yeah, we have to see. But I thought this was about letters now. Wait, letters? I thought you started talking about this because you, you mentioned letters. That if you have a letters. Letters. Le letters. Lighton. Oh, letters. Uh, no, it, I, I just thought of that. Okay. Somehow. No, because swimming is also a movement option we didn't have in CrossCode. Just like yeah. climbing up letters. Or writing letters. You couldn't. You could also couldn't write letters. <laughs> that's yeah, also true. Mm, that's true. And you also couldn't eat letters. 
Ja. Leider. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I think the stream is now. We can end the stream now, yeah. I think. This was a sign that the stream has now reached its last, <laughs> its last black, basically. Okay. Mm. The, 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 the terrible pun quality marks the um, end of the stream. Yes. Okay. Let's read. So, can I play the song or do you still need some preparation? Um, nah, I think that's, that's pretty much it, so yeah. At least we implemented some damage numbers, some kind of damage numbers. And um, yeah, I will guess until the next game does stream. You can play yes. the music, the thing now. Also, thanks everyone for... Oh no, actually I can't because, because the soundboard is gone. <laughs> Wait, the soundboard? Oh! Yeah, the soundboard left. Give me a second, I need to improvise. No, I can uh, start the soundboard again, it's fine. Okay, if you... Let's see if... I mean, I can also just play it on soundboard, uh, music board. No, it's... <laughs> give just a second. So it should be ready now. No, no, it should be. Here we go. Okay. All right. This was uh, our Project Terra game that stream and there will be more streams in the future. Maybe, well, at least once a month, I think we'll get around. Maybe in two weeks or three weeks, we will see. I that already. Um, there's actually still more streams happening in Discord. So um, you can still go there if you want to see more streams and yeah. Good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank you for staying with us despite internet okay. problems. Watch bye YouTubers. Bye. Bye.